Yeah, good morning everybody. Let me take this opportunity to present an interesting case which I had in my ICU last month. A 26-year boy was brought to me uh, to my hospital in an ill-oriented state. He had history, he had convulsions, he had pain in abdomen, vomitings and sweating. There is uh, no history of consumption of any insecticide, drugs, alcohol or any narcotic. Uh, but there was a history of drinking water from a stagnant pond which he had gone in the villages in the jungles and in the jungles he drank water from this pond and thereafter he had pain in abdomen vomiting sweating and convulsions so I, when we examined him we found that his pupils were normal the blood pressure was slightly on the lower side it was 100 by 50 his pulse rate was under, around 100 and uh, but he was ill oriented when I examined his RS, I found that there are bilateral crepitations, conducted sounds, probably he had aspirated. So, thinking it to be poisoning in the initial stage, we started him with gastric lavage, but it was clear. The sugars were also normal between 98, blood sugar random. The routine chemistry also did not give us any clues. Electrolytes were on normal side. The tox screen was inconclusive and cholinesterase stress levels were within range. Since he was drowsy, ill-oriented and history of seizures, we got his CT scan done which was also normal but and we did his EG, the EG showed the typical postictal slowing. Now since the GCS score was on lower side, we intubated the patient, supported his respiration, secured his airways and uh, put him on assisted ventilation. The Circulation was stabilized by giving a bolus IV fluids, 30 ml per kg body weight. I gave a bolus and he stabilized on that. Then we put him on maintenance doses. So after taking care of airway, breathing and circulation, I took measures for his seizures. We controlled his seizures uh, by giving him anti-epileptics. Levipil is the standard we follow nowadays, but uh, Maxelf also is a very popular anti seizure measures uh, which we in our ICU. We gave him 50% dextro just in case he does not have any hypoglycemia. Antibiotics were given since he had already aspirated we gave him antibiotics and uh, the patient on routine assisted ventilation and this support of his circulation he recovered on day two but though he recovered you know the problem remained what was the cause of this we could not find anything. Usually we find insecticide poisoning in such cases, but in this case there was no smell of uh, almonds or no smell suggestive of insecticide poisoning. There was no smell of uh, alcohol. So uh, moreover the cholinesterase levels were also normal. So it was unlikely to be insecticide. Could it be drug induced? The tox screen was did not give us any clue. Moreover there was nothing to suggest uh, that he had taken any drugs. The, he had also not consumed any alcohol or narcotics. So we revisited the history, we asked the relatives what was the uh, problem and they said that he had gone in the jungles, there he drank water from a stagnant pond and after 10-15 minutes he started develop having severe pain in abdomen, he vomited, he was sweating and thereafter he had convulsions. It was after that that the relatives they picked him up and brought him to the hospital. They also gave a very important clue that he had, that we had seen few dead peacocks lying near the pond. That alerted us to the possibility of probably something toxic with the water. Could it be insecticide that has seeped into the water or could it be blue green algae? Since all the features did not feature, uh, support insecticide poisoning, we thought in terms of blue green algae. So we tried to piece these things, history of drinking water from a stagnant pond with GI symptoms, seizures, could it be blue green algae and we, what we did is usually we asked the relatives to bring the sample of the toxin which somebody has consumed. In this case fortunately they had brought the water from the pond in a glass bottle and then we the routine jar test what we do. We allow the water to stand for 6 to 8 hours if it is a toxic algae, a toxic it usually releases toxins and gases and so it floats on the. In this case also the water they had bought we found that there was a green layer at the top. So that confirmed our suspicion that this could be blue green algae. Now what is blue green algae? 
it is not an algae in the true sense, but it is a bacteria called a cyanobacteria that are present in many stagnant water bodies. Cyanobacteria are named after the word cyanotorca is blue, hence they are also called as blue green algae. They normally look green and sometimes they turn bluish when scums are dying. Cyanobacteria is a group of heterogeneous group of prokaryotic photosynthetic organism. Photosynthetic organism, that's very important. The bad part of this blue green algae is it is chlorine resistant. You know, chlorine is the most popular disinfectant in uh, rural areas. They put chlorine in water bodies thinking it that it will disinfect, but it is chlorine resistant. Because what happens, you know, this uh, cyanobacteria or this blue green algae, it forms layered structure. And though the upper layer may be disinfected, may be destroyed, the lower layers are protected and which could still be capable of secreting poisonous toxins. Then there is no effect of UV light. The death of the bloom releases toxins. Boiling water will also not destroy these toxins and could actually increase the toxin levels. Hydrogen peroxide does have some, some effect in these toxins. Now, these toxins could be anything neurotoxin, cytotoxin, endotoxin, hepatotoxins and a few specific toxins were also isolated like anatoxin A, anatoxin AS, aplysiotoxin, cyanopeptylene, cylindrospermine, domic acid, nodularin R, neosaxitonin, tox toxin and saxitoxin. The few species such as microcystis, FNSuminon and anabina produce cyanotoxins causing GIT and neurological disorders. Now, these toxins are actually a series of peptides. They are microcystins or nodularins. The hepatotoxicity is because of the deterioration of the microfilament function of the hepatocytes leading to cell shrinkage and bleeding into the hepatic sinusoids. The peptides are also thought to be carcinogenic in humans, but long term large scale studies are still not available with us. And uh, the neurotoxins are responsible for the muscle twitching muscle contraction, convulsions and in few cases death have been reported. The character of these toxins, the anatoxins and the saxitoxins are neurotoxins whereas the microcystines and the nodularins are hepatotoxins. And hepatotoxicity, I have already told you, hepatotoxicity is because of the deterioration of the microfilament function of the hepatocytes. Now take home message, take home message in this what we learned from this is that Abandoned water bodies can be contaminated by poisonous flora. So, just be very cautious while drinking anything from an abandoned uh, body, water body. So, off taste and off odor is suggestive of toxin presence in such waters. Moreover, warm temperatures, altered pH also favors the growth of this poisonous flora. Moreover, high nutrient levels, high nutrients, especially phosphorus. You know, phosphorus, most of the fertilizers, they contain phosphorus. So, this phosphorus, if it, it seeps into these water bodies, it alters the nitrogen and phosphorus balance and if you get a very low nitrogen to phosphorus balance, in other words, if there is more of phosphorus, then there is every chance that this water body may grow a poisonous flora called as micro, uh, blue green algae. So, stagnant non-flowing waters with no turbulence is not safe. Blooms are toxic and death of bloom tends to be the cells become leaky and result in release of toxins into the surrounding water may, which may persist for more than 3 months. These toxins may persist for more than 3 months before they degrade. Now, how to reduce the algae in water body? So, you can reduce the algae feeding nutrients especially phosphorus that seep into this water. Fertilizers, avoid as far as possible fertilizers. You plant native, native species which require less or no fertilizers. Use phosphorus free products and reduce the runoff by applying it when there are no rains. See, usually what happens, they, when the rains come, the farmers, they think that uh, they, they can spray the uh, fertilizers which will help them in the crop growth. But then these fertilizers, they seep into these water bodies if they are nearby. So, you can uh, give these fertilizers when there are no rains so that there is minimal of seepage into the water bodies. Natural fertilizers are also harmful because they also contain uh, harmful nutrients which uh, help the growth of these organisms. Check your septic tank. Leaks, fissures can contaminate water bodies. 
the pets they poop near the poop near the water bodies or even humans defecate which is again a very rich nutrient for this poisonous flora then combat shoreline erosion see you reduce the runoff from the lakes by planting trees on the shoreline if there are trees on the shoreline what will happen the runoff that comes from the other places to the lakes is somewhere absorbed there it doesn't find its way directly to into the water bodies then don't litter near the water sources soap water it will alters the ph and it supplies nutrients to the algae for its growth detergents use phosphate free cleaners and soaps canada is a country which has already banned phosphates in soaps and detergents so you can use phosphate free cleaners and detergents then minimize impervious surfaces close to the water bodies what happens there is a tendency to pave even the uh, water bodies the shoreline of the water bodies if you pave the shoreline of the water bodies it becomes impervious so all the seepage or the runoff from the periphery it finds its way into the water body in fact you keep it free don't pave it till the shoreline then what happens this uh, seep uh, runoff that comes can get uh, um, absorbed in this part and will not find a direct entry into the water bodies so friends blue green algae is a poisonous flora that is found in toxic in stagnant water non flowing non turbulent water water uh, water or lakes or ponds and of taste of order should alert you to this possibility so just be very cautious just be alert somebody coming to you after with history of consumption of such water and pain in abdomen and git and neurological symptoms it could be blue green algae thank you so much